you doing? Hey, Sean, how are you? I'm good, good. Thanks for making the time. I appreciate it. Oh, no problem. Oh, uh, thank, thank you. Thank you for making the time, of course. Uh, glad we are all here together. Uh, just a little bit about our group, uh, if you're not aware yet. Uh, very, very long story short, um, I was brought, uh, you know, big digital assets as an investment opportunity. Uh, and through my due diligence, obviously, uh, I realized that we're dealing uh, with a company that is um, well positioned for the future, regulation first. And uh, moreover, uh, through my due diligence, <clears throat> I found it very hard, on, you know, to find factual, proper information online. So therefore, I decided to kind of start my own investors group for big and uh, get, get, get all the people together, get the ideas going, any news I might miss. Uh, and so our group has like auto custom news feed bots for, you know, big uh -huh. and all of the partners that are involved. Uh, we've grown, I'd say in the last, uh, how long has it now been to this? Like uh, we've been running six months, five six months. Six months, yeah. yeah. Five, six we've, months, I guess. We've grown it up to uh, 250 members. Wow. Uh, very good liquidity pool uh, invested together. And uh, Div Divish and I just decided that we want to do whatever we can to spread the word on all the partners and everybody under the umbrella of big. That's very smart. And, I like that. Yeah. And uh, just to hear, you know, from the professionals and hear their <laughs> ideas and hear about them. And by right. professionals, obviously you've been, you know, you've been in the crypto game industry for, for a while now. So uh, that's what I meant by that. But yeah, um, yeah. so thank you so much for joining us. And um and, I, you know, the basis is to find your thoughts on big and learn more about your venture, uh, Liquid uh, Lightning and uh, on the Lightning Network. And um, yeah. And uh, so I guess to start it off, I think what we started off with everybody is kind of just learning about you and uh, where you come from, your background, educational, business exits, entrances, all the juicy, disgusting, fun things. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, happy to happy to share. And it's it's always good to know you're betting. You know, you're betting on people. You're betting on a sector, always. And yeah. um, you know, we obviously uh, for myself, heavily committed to BIG. Um, you know, I've been in tech for for 25 years. My background actually, you know, started off. I'm born in Vancouver, Canada. I actually, I raised overseas in Tel Aviv, Israel, of all places. Ah. Uh, my parents went there to work. And they actually went there as, uh, oddly enough, as Christian missionaries. Uh, so very strange back. And then they would take out citizenship. I got drafted. I served in the Israeli military during the Gulf War. And uh, I'm not Jewish, but nonetheless, uh, I learned a lot from that experience, tough as nails uh, experience, and certainly uh, coming through the other side of it. And then and, and actually during that time, my army buddy, uh, his dad was a professor at Tel Aviv University, had a daughter in New York, and they were, and this is like 91, 92, they're doing this thing called email. And they're sending emails back and it's over there, over the, I'm like, wow, that's amazing. And I always loved computers. I was always very fascinated by that kind of stuff. And uh, that just clicked and resonated with me uh, when I came back to Canada on my own uh, and, and slugged it out to find my way in life. Um, you know, I took a pro, I took up cycling, took a like road racing, took it very far. Uh, and sponsors went, went, to a high level and but as that sort of wound down 95 96 got myself heavily involved in internet tech and uh and never looked back in terms of my tech career and uh, during that time um learned a lot we survived the dot com man we, we made some good decisions to not take on debt and do other things we came out the other side uh we got involved in data center businesses and learned a lot about you know all, all that architecture and how it all works and uh and, and just all the different in, in internet technology that came along and and, and since then, I mean, I, I heard about Bitcoin in 2011 from uh, from my cousin, and, and I got heavily involved in 2012. And, and for me, it was not this great, oh, big rabbit hole that I had to figure it out for a long time. It was just like, oh, it's it's digital money for the digital age. Because we'd worked on internet tech for so, such, such a long time, it just seemed like um, it was just a natural extension. It's just the continuation of the revolution of the internet we've been working on for, for the last 10, 15 years. So, and then... Uh, uh, you know, since then, uh, I've done out, I've got, in 2014, built out uh, at the time an industrial Bitcoin mine for a client and, and got, got all that experience there. And, and then late 2014, started coming up, you know, ideas based upon our, uh, you know, our, our data analytics background and uh, search technology background that we've been in in the 90s and early 2000s, just and seeing where it was going and, and uh, um, came up with the ideas for Clue and Bitrank. Which are the company's core products, and reached out to to Lance in in, in January, and and uh, it, it wouldn't have happened without him because you need that strong partner who's 
is equally as bold and crazy as you are to, to <laughs> venture out and, uh, and take it on. And, um, and I still remember where those ideas hit. I was actually walking through Tim Horton's parking lot. I'm like, it, it's, I'm like, it's so obvious. I started getting the shakes. I called them like, it's so obvious. What we're, it, it just, it felt like the, you could see the future. I'm like, this is going to be huge. And, um, and so since then, and we, you know, Lance and I, we, we slugged it out during those times there. We raised money, friends and family. We went, you know, a year and a half, nearly two years of paying ourselves anything. And, and uh, managed to take the company public and, and during that whole you know blockchain not bitcoin phase in 2017 uh and we're like well it's actually all bitcoin not blockchain because bitcoin is the public blockchain and uh and then since then uh um during the crypto winter which we survived and came through and with that we had that that grit that we learned early on in life we selected it out and and it came out the other side with the netcoins acquisition bolting in all of our compliance software and, and filling the void what was in canada and and and, and certainly um we here we are today with a company that's rolling forward and got, has lots of bright prospects and healthy balance sheet and continuing to, to motor forward. So I'll stop there. If there's questions, I'm just kind of rambling on. No, no, it's it's uh, it, that's exactly what we're looking for, right? You know, part of uh, why we're doing this is for everybody to truly understand and and get to learn. Uh, in this case, the founders of Big and and um, it's it's fantastic to hear about your background in analytics and and uh, it sounds like you've kind of been a proponent uh, for the future of tech all, all along. So yes, <laughs> definitely future of tech all along. No question. I actually remember, uh, I'm actually just going to hold one second. I'm going to open the door here because I need some fresh air in here. I just talk to me right in the middle. But, uh, the weather's, uh, I just came back from the Bitcoin conference in Miami and I started wearing my layers when I got back here. I'm so hot. Uh, <laughs> but uh, and it was, a, you know, and that conference was very interesting because you know, I remember going back to the ones where you had like a few hundred people and you could walk up and meet a lot of the founders, a lot of the companies. And now it's like 30, 40,000 people. And you're like, wow. Um, it it kind of reminded me the the Lightning Network conference I went down to in El Salvador recently, like last November, the second. So uh, it reminded me of the old ones where you could meet all the founders of all the companies. One of the reasons why I went down there specifically, because I remember that the, the roadmap, like this is how you meet people who are going to be. Yeah, this is the networking, right? This is the networking, right? And in, in, in three, four, five years, it's going to be hard to get a hold of anybody like that. Or they'd be too busy. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, so you you mentioned uh, earlier that you you know reached out to Lance uh, in the beginning stages with this beautiful idea. What what was Lance doing back then? Were you guys already kind of? How did you guys meet? How, like, did you guys connect back then? Yeah, we had known each other since the um, since the since the '90s. He actually had a, another company that was doing incubation, and in terms of uh, and, and they're working the public markets. And we were both, you know, very young in our mid twenties, and um, and that's how we met. And we, so we stayed in touch ever since. And we both have this sort of entrepreneurial spirit. And we did even, you know, contract work and programming work for his clients and back and forth. So we knew each other, um, and uh, you know, you, that's how it kind of worked out. And so we we're able to. Uh, able to work together in the next phase here and, and, and grind it out right because that's really what it gets down to when you really got to go through things you have to fight and if you don't have the grit or you've had an easy life or you don't want to fight then uh you're probably not going to make it right yeah and, and uh, that's that's entrepreneurial uh mm-hmm. instinct 101 right there I, I do uh funny you say i'm actually from israel as well uh, i do know that when ones go to the army uh they mature and uh, in any country, not just Israel, I would say when you're going into uh, any type of uh, technical training like that, it's, yeah. it's discipline based. And um, it mm-hmm. makes a, and that's why I think I don't think a lot of people know that but Israel is very high in tech and yes. um, and pharmaceuticals. And there's a reason for that, because they train hard and they learn hard and uh, they work hard. And yeah, yeah. I risk tolerance, I think, too, when I look, you know, look at Israel and then that stuff there. Um, incidentally, one of our advisors is Roy from Breeze Technology out of Israel, um, a key lightning network wallet. And I'm just on the liquid side. But you look at Israel, you look at that kind of stuff there, and I think risk tolerance is, is very high. So, you, you, you're, you know, so you're willing to be entrepreneurial and you're willing to take risk because you understand what true risk is and, and how it balances out in life. But, um, you know, and uh, as a, you know, I'm really a, I'm a born and bred Canadian <laughs> for, for many generations. So it was an unusual experience for me, but when I look back on, and, and I'm, I'm, you know, uh, I'm grateful for, and, uh, the one expression I love, uh, out of Israel and certainly out of the military is that Kadima, 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 right? Forward, forward, always forward. Right. So we just, you know, we, we just keep fighting and keep pushing hard enough 
and, and stay in the game, you know, we'll come out the other side if we can uh, keep our keep a level head. So um, absolutely. <clears throat> uh, I was just gonna say, you know, you talk about risk tolerance and and you know, you guys have been in the in the industry and in Bitcoin for you know, so many years or in crypto for so many years. And, and, you know, people are just getting into it now. People are just really starting to understand it. And even in today's market, there's a little bit of, I guess, hesitance, right? When you look at, you know, Bitcoin or crypto or associated technologies, right? So uh, it's, it's really interesting, you know, when we talk to uh, Mark and just really understand the story of big, right? Um, and that's part of the reason, you know, that we're, we're having these conversations, just really want to get to know the the, the people behind the company. Um, and of course, we're super interested in, in, in liquid as well. Yeah, for sure. And uh, risk tolerance. And also, you know, one of the things I, I like is, you know, our philosophies and, you know, my philosophy as a, as a principal founder and, and, and how we see things and that, and it really gets down to how we see value for Bitcoin, where we see it actually. Um, and I've given, I've given talks and lectures or, you know, been on panels and stuff like that. And I like to ask the one question, you know, what is Bitcoin? And you get the typical answer. Well, it's a payment network, it's money for the digital age, it's value transfer, et cetera. And yes, it's used for all those things, but ultimately those questions, those answers are incorrect. At its technology core, Bitcoin is a trust protocol for the internet. It is the eighth layer of the seven layers that make up the plumbing of the internet that we did in the nineties. And, and uh, it represents a continuation of the revolution of the internet. And that gets down to a deep philosophy of why I've been in it for a long time. I hold, and I know where it's going because I look at my time back in the, you know, the 90s and 2000s, all through that internet phase, and, and that original seven layers of the internet, the original technology makes up the internet and the value that it has. And back in 98, 99, they said the internet was worth $180 billion. That's what it would take Microsoft and the big tech companies to rebuild it. Now, and, and fast forward, Google goes public in like 2004, and uh, we think the internet is worth $3 trillion by 2010. It's suddenly worth 10 to $20 trillion. And now that original seven layers of technology, the internet is, is worth an unfathomable number. The internet, we can't even imagine what it is. And so when you look at Bitcoin as the trust protocol for the end of that eighth layer, that changes how trust will be done. Money is the massive first use case, like email and communications first use case of the version one of the internet. Uh, and, and we look at the market cap thing, okay, well, it's six, 700 billion, whatever it is. This is, the, this is a trust protocol and, and, and wrapping our minds around the value of a protocol and when it hits an inflection point of usage is, is hard to do because it's, uh, but once it does, that value gets tremendously unlocked. So now I look at Bitcoin and say, well, let me get this straight. So the future digital currency of the world for the digital age, which is just a no brainer. And the protocol itself and this open blockchain, this public network, which is going to change trust in the digital age for all things, because you can use this as a digital timestamp service for anything. Original, in fact, it was originally not called blockchain, it was called, it was called time chain, and it represents timestamp. And it solved the long standing computer problem of how do you create trust online between two parties without a third party intermediary acting the way. This sounds a oh, straightforward statement, but it's very powerful and has deep impact. And so the value over the next seven to 10 years, I think it's just, you know, it, it'll be unlocked as people realize that this is just a continuation of the revolution of the internet and its value will be unlocked over time as everybody wakes up and we will have our iPhone moment, that moment in 2006, because I remember back in the nineties and early 2000s, people like, why would I want email? Why would I want to shop online? I had all these questions. Oh, they're guys, they're, they're, they're people rag on me all the time. All oh, the internet's just used for hackers and crackers and terrible, t- terrible people. Um, and I'm like, no, it's gonna change everything. And sure enough, that valley got unlocked. We had our iPhone moment in 2006, and and, and we really we're going to come into that again here. And my in my uh, from my experience, it's the light the, the killer app is not anything else but the Lightning Network itself. The Lightning Network is the killer app that changes Bitcoin from being this secure layer that's really you know it's fairly slow but really really strong and trustworthy and adds in that ability to do you know trillions of transactions across a global network and represents a, a fundamental shift to how payments will be done around the world. And every company in the world over the next seven years is going to have to get on the Lightning Network. It's, it's an, it is an inevitability. Um, and I, I've seen this game before, and here we are. So um, I know, so I'm just rambling on. I'll, I'll stop there. <laughs> no, no, don't, don't. Uh, we're, we're, we're digesting everything you're getting. So keep, keep it going. So going to the next question, uh, since we're on Bitcoin. Uh, what are your thoughts on what's what's happening now in the market? Do, do you have a certain catalyst you would chalk it up to? Um, what what are your thoughts on what, the volatility at the moment? Yeah, I mean the volatility. I mean I've, I've lived through ten dollars to thirty dollars to sixty to three hundred back to three. I mean I lived through it all. It, it's relative in terms of the trading, and there's a lot of fast money out there moving in and out, and and I'm um, in a market 
gyrations, but the under, underlying value of the of the this new technique can get grow and grow, and eventually the volatility will die down. And it's it's somewhat relative. We talk about it being volatile as a currency, and it's it's not quite there as a currency yet in terms of what we we use it. But you get outside of North America in our bubble, and you look at other currencies around the world. And you know, if you're down in Argentina, what would you have? What would you prefer? You know, when you want the peso, or do you want the Bitcoin? If you're in Africa, what do you want? You want Bitcoin or their local currency? Well, it's a no. That's for there. It's a no-brainer. Um, of course, you'd want Bitcoin, and and so it, that 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 technology is going to bleed from the outside in, and, and then continue to be morphed into you know used across our network here, and ultimately. Um, it, it'll supplant a lot of stuff as over time, uh, but it's going to start from the outside in. And the volatility is all relative. And there's a lot of firms that are, you know, they're moving the price as they want to, doing the old Wall Street stuff. Uh, but eventually, the price will become bigger than that they can actually uh, um, handle. And of course, you get more dispersion of the Bitcoin, and you're going to have the halving come up in less than two years now. So there'll be less Bitcoin going in the ecosystem. And um, but at the end of the day, there's just a lot of money floating around out there looking for a home, and they printed more of it. And if they can raise interest rates all they want, but there's just, and it's a big world and a lot of people want it. And I think we just have to give it time and, and let the ecosystem continue to unlock itself. Well said. Yeah, I mean, that, that was a, a <clears throat> super interesting point about, um, you know, I guess the perceived volatility of Bitcoin, right? Having spent some time in, you know, Africa uh, many years myself, right? Um, I know if you'd, you, you'd ask me for local currency or Bitcoin, I'd say Bitcoin's probably more uh, <laughs> stable over the long term. It's totally, right? Um, and, and, and that, you know, the use is there. I mean, we, we talk about this. Actually, I have a, I have a book coming out. Um, I actually, it's out on Kindle or the pulp hard copy, and it's co-authored with uh, my, my friend Stephen, uh, who actually was a researcher at BIG. It's called Trust on the Rise of Bitcoin. And we get into some of the, you know, the Bitcoin adoption in there. And, um, you know, why Bitcoin is a trust protocol kind of stuff, but really the digital age, you know, we look at sort of the internet adoption around the world and it's very high. And of course, Norway and North America, where it's, you know, 98% in climbing, uh, but in other developing nations, it can be as low as, you know, you know 47% on average. So the, the growth of the digital age will happen with the growth of the, of the internet itself as it continues to roll out and, and it is accelerating at, you know, uh, ever, ever faster as it's, it's the way you have to be. But um, I, I, that's one of the trends I keep an eye on in terms of developing nations and where they're going in terms of the internet penetration because it's it's key for the digital age. Uh, yeah, so let's uh, pivot into some liquid information here because uh, you know uh, we do have quite a few people who are are very interested in learning more. Uh, so so <clears throat> just for for new people or anyone getting into it or are looking at the liquid stock or whatever it might be. Can you explain exactly um, what is Liquid, who's involved in Liquid, and um, what is its main purpose? What's the main purpose of the, of the Lightning Network, you can say? Right. So I guess it gets down to, first off, we need to understand what is the Lightning Network and, and, and then our role within that space. So the Lightning Network is what we call a layer two to Bitcoin's layer one, uh, and it solves Bitcoin's scaling issue in terms of how it's how it, uh, it's able to handle mass volume of transactions. Now it consists of, I'll get a little technical here, but not too much. It consists of what they call nodes and channels. A node is just simply a computer or server somewhere in the world that runs the open source Lightning Network software. And within that software, you create payment channels with other groups around the world. And right now there's a little less than 100,000 nodes or payment channels and, and, and 30, 40,000 nodes. A lot of, you look it up on one ML, lots of nodes are climbing and it looks like the internet itself where when you want to send a transaction, it may go from hop to hop until it reaches its final destination. And so th this is, you know, it, it, it's based off the same kind of model. Um, you don't know the final destination, but you do know that you do know the next hop. And uh, it's, um, it's truly revolutionary in terms of how it works. Now within the space, so let's say you and I want to do some transactions. We can open a payment channel with ourselves. We can transfer Bitcoin from main chain to our Lightning Network wallet natively. And the miners will process it. It'll show up there when it shows up there. And once it's sitting on the Lightning Network, you and I could do a million transactions inside of an hour. It's the fastest the speed of the network. Uh, and we can, at the end of that hour, we could decide, you know what, our, our business is concluded. We can close the payment channels and the final balance is stored on either side of who's ever got what Bitcoin. And we could choose at that point to leave the Bitcoin on the Lightning Network, or we can simply transfer it natively back to the main chain via the miners processing the block, in which case we have a final balance representing one single mining transaction, but really, we did a million transactions across the network over the last hour. And uh, that's, that's you know, uh, it's, it's revolutionary in that sense. The 
there's some history in terms of how you scale Bitcoin and in simply having bigger blocks and all these uh, other ideas are failed ideas. And we have to look simply how we scale the internet and the internet scale with multiple layers of technology. We talked about this at the beginning where there's seven layers of technology that make the internet work. And these are built out over time and they loosely work together. They didn't all happen at once. And, uh, and they call this the OSI technology stack. So anybody wants to look that up, it's, it's open information. And, uh, and the same kind of principle is being applied to Bitcoin in terms of how you scale it out. So um, now liquids in, in this space here, we are a, uh, a, what they call an LSP, a Lightning Network Service Provider, uh, which is kind of like an ISP back in the 90s and 2000s, where we make it very easy for companies to get on the Lightning Network. Uh, we have a, a non-custodial, a self-managed platform. Um, but we also are a liquidity provider. So we have a, a bunch of Bitcoin that we bought on our treasury and we continue to put that Bitcoin onto the Lightning Network in order to provide liquidity. Now, why is that? So there is a technical requirement when you and I open channels or when you open channels across the, the, the Lightning Network, those channels must have Bitcoin on them in order to be functional. It is just the way the network works. So for us, that gives us the opportunity to put our Bitcoin to work. And if a transact, and right now we have 10 climbing to 24, what they call routing nodes, where we actually route transactions uh, all over the world. And we have payment channels that have been opened up with all kinds of different providers and growing very quickly. This is a very big part of what we're doing. And the, the bigger that footprint, the more likely we're going to have a transaction go across our portion of the network. And we charge fees in, in Bitcoin and in SATs for helping for that transaction to where it needs to get to. And so for us, uh, the Lightning Network offers low fees. The fees are climbing. They will climb to a, uh, they'll still remain cheap and low cost, but they'll climb to a more economical rate. Uh, but it is designed to be a volume network. So we are, you know, if you're charging out, you know, 28 sats a transaction and you're able to process 100, 100 million transactions, well, you've earned 28 Bitcoin. Um, and that's that's where the network is heading. And so we're, we're, we're really focused on um, our platform. Yes, there's the hosting aspect where we, we charge for hosting for the platform, but what we're really interested in is uh, having customers come on board and when they spin up their node and channel, you make it very easy with a hit of a button, um, similar to the Clue model where it's a web-based interface and does this thing. The, um, they get hooked into our rest of our network and we want to capture that transactions that they're processing over their network. And for us, that means there's, there's uh, effectively unlimited upside with the customer and you're going to earn a lot more than you ever could with, with selling them some some hosting uh, and so that's where we're, we're 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 working very hard on we're creating the tools we have a um, unique data set being built out we're ca capturing a lot of information about the network uh, we're using our analytics uh, information we have some ex-BIGers who would work for BIG for for a number of years then moved on to Silicon Valley and then heard what was going on I was like hey I want to I want to join and uh, and then so we have that analytics background uh, that we're going to apply to make our portion of the network smarter and continue to develop the tools for for managing um, this service at scale. And what will happen over time is you know, all companies are going to have to get on the Lightning Network. The miners will have to get into Lightning Network. They all have, uh, you know, Bitcoin on their balance sheet. There are, uh, you know, infrastructure providers across the network. But what we have as an advantage is we have, it's not so simple to just set up a node and, and, and that's it. Uh, you have to have that um, channels and that reach already built out your footprint. And so for us, everything we're doing now is about footprint. That's the race. And we're trying to, uh, and we're working very hard to do it before any, everybody else wakes up. And um, because we've seen this before, where suddenly one mining company got into the space, the public markets, and then, you know, they realized, Hey, there's something here and everybody showed up afterwards. And, um, we know the drum beats getting louder and louder for lightning network all the time. You've got Kraken just announced a lightning network. I know you've got Bitfinex, you have Block with Jack Dorsey. They're heavily into lightning network. Uh, a lot of other companies, Silicon Valley hasn't quite woken up yet, uh, but they will. And when they do, it's, uh, it's, uh, we want to make sure that we're very well positioned for, for that as a brand and as a, as a, as a footprint. So. Uh, well, when they do, you'll definitely know because they, they, they just come and take. So. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> For sure, right? What do, they, what do they always do? Write checks, you know? It's, it's That's it. That's the one thing they're good at, you know? Yeah. But uh, thank God for that, or else we wouldn't have a lot of the things we do online. Absolutely. We absolutely. tech is. So, uh, so, yeah. Sorry, I wanted to get a, a quick question in their show. I mean, all of this is, is super interesting. And it, I mean, it sounds like there's a number of advantages for being on the Lightning Network. Um, I guess purely from a volume perspective, the number of transactions that you can do, which you know I imagine translates into more beneficial costs uh, or lower costs. Um, and I'm sure there's there's some others. Are are you able to kind of contrast with, you know, what 
what, how are people doing these transactions today versus, you know, what, what the Lightning Network will bring in the future when people embrace it? Right. So, I mean, a Lightning Network's being embraced in El Salvador, um, and that's that's their that's their payment rails. They're sending money back and forth, and got it. They're tying it into you know, Strike's got their stuff. They're they send out you know dollars, and and it, the the Lightning Network transaction represents the uh, the marker that's being sent back and forth. There's actually technology being built, built up by Lightning Labs. Uh, called Taro. I think I keep wanting to call it Torah, but I believe it's from my Israeli days. But <laughs> it's uh, and what it represents is the ability to do US dollar tokens across the Lightning Network. So tokens are coming for Lightning Network. Uh, so now you can do it at massive scale with you know no real gas fees and uh, with the you know the native currency for the internet, which is Bitcoin itself. Uh, and that that'll be a big game changer uh, as it continues more forward. And every company like Visa, uh, we announced we're going on the Visa Fast Track program a couple of weeks back and they're all going to, I, I mean, I can't speak for them specifically, but in my opinion, they will all have to get on board this because this is a, a network coming along, which is 10 X better than any payment network. Um, it, it's, uh, it gives last mile of reach. Anybody can get on, anybody can use it. And, uh, it, it's, it, it has that momentum behind it. And I've, I've seen this, I've seen this before. And it reminds me of the internet rolling out where, you know, the, the banks and all these institutions are like, well, we, we really like the idea of the internet, but the internet scares us. But, but we like the, the networking, the value is all in the networking. Uh, and so we're going to make our own private network and we're going to you know, keep it all closed garden. And of course, you know, eventually that film, now they use TCPIP and, and the internet itself. And it's very similar to what we've seen over the years with financial institutions or, you know, it, oh, we, the Bitcoin scares us, but we really like the underlying technology blockchain. It's all about blockchain and we're going to make our own private networks and they're all going to do their thing. And of course, events that come full circle and realize that, you know, the open architecture is, is the way to go and lighting network will be the stuff they're going to have to embrace. Awesome. Thank you. And, uh, you know, as, as you were kind of talking before, you were, you, you mentioned a couple of, uh, uh, a couple of newer entrants into the marketplace. Um, how would you kind of stack them against uh, liquid and, you know, what do you feel your, your competitive advantages are, you know, given, you, I guess you guys are, are quicker to market for sure. Yeah, quicker to market right now, for sure. Yeah. And the public markets, we're the first and only Lightning Network company. We do know there's some others that are, are potentially coming. We, we know that they're working on listings. They have some some ideas there. And we we, we absolutely welcome it because it'll it'll continue to raise the profile of what we're doing. Um, and, and on the private sector, you see more investments into this space. You see Lightning Labs, who, who we know and, and, and uh, we, we don't compete with them. They actually create the software that we use and, and it's open source, but they just did a 70 million uh, uh, Series B uh, just announced a few weeks ago, and, and uh, you got a, a bunch of other companies in the space like Voltus and, and and that we can that we do compete with. Um, but we talk to them all, and, and it's kind of all, all more entrants are, are creating that that Metcalf's law and that ecosystem uh, race. So as long as we, you know, as a company, and as we're telling us telling the team, we just have to stay focused on one thing: transaction volume. Everything we do is about moving that one rock up the hill, and that's all we footprint transaction volume. Because what we're what we're positioning ourselves for is that breakout of Lightning Network that will carry us up faster than any marketing sales plan ever possibly could, just by having that big footprint and and being out there. And that that's um, you know it's a, just a playbook from the you know from the 90s. <laughs> and I like to say Amazon. Well, why did Amazon succeed? Well, for a lot of reasons, but ultimately they stayed upright. They survived. And they let the growth of the internet and the network effect carry them up, you know, 10,000%, just, you know, bigger than anything possibly could. And the same kind of thing's going to happen here with Metcalf's law. And you can start to see, you're seeing it unfolding now. Um, so I believe we're, we're looking, you know, myself looking 18 months out um, as we continue to build out and, we'll, and we see this, this ramping up and we're seeing the hockey stick curve come up with the no growth channel growth, transaction growth. Um, and we'll just, just keep pushing that one, that one rock just, we only care about transaction volume and footprint. We want to be uh, built like a Silicon Valley company where we have this uh, massive accelerant behind us and we're well positioned as a brand in the space. And, and we just keep doing the one thing. We don't focus so much on just the Canadian market per se, where of course we're listed in Canada, but we really have to, you know, we want to get an office in San Francisco, keep getting back down there. And, and, and you know, we have to be like a Silicon Valley company because that's what we are. So I've, uh, no, thanks. Thanks so much for that. Um, so I know you mentioned you want to be like a Silicon Valley uh, company. I know uh, you guys are publicly traded here. Are there any mm -hmm. thoughts of entering the American uh, exchange? Yeah, absolutely. We, we have a, a, a OTCQB listing, as most Canadian companies do, as a 
practically a courtesy listing. Uh, but we love to get down to the United States over time. Uh, that's that's definitely where the volume is. It's where the uh, it's where the more of the traction is. And in terms of uh, and I'm not shy to, to say we you know having had success with you know buying and we bought netcoins the public markets we put it together. We, we're definitely looking to to um, you know create a bigger hole and especially in stronger markets if we as we as the share prices bounce back for all companies in the space. Uh, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll continue to build relationships and look to bolt stuff on and, and grow organically, but also through acquisitions and, right. and create liquid fintech is, uh, you know, just get that like, serious momentum and get scale. And that's what we need. Right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, I don't, I don't really have any more questions. How about you, Div? Yeah, I mean, this is, this is kind of more just of an, uh, I guess, open-ended question, but, uh, you know, as you look forward, you know, next six, 12, like 18 months, uh, you know, what excites you uh, the most about, you know, what, what Liquid's uh, working on or, you know, what's on the, what's on the roadmap? Yeah, and what BIG's working on too, right? So I'm very excited about that. Oh yeah, absolutely. That yeah. Uh, I'm uh, I'm a fairly large shareholder. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think we're all shareholders. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, but I think you're, right. you're big. Yeah, you're, I think, I'm I thought I saw it the other day. Sorry? Have, uh, yeah, I'm probably the largest shareholder. You are the largest shareholder. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And, you know, I've had uh, a lot of sleepless nights, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, and I've been committed for a long time. And, and uh, you know, we, we see the vision and we knew it would be, you know, from 2012, we knew it would be 10 years. So, I know, big, I'm excited about that. I know I've been, been talking to uh, Mark and we're seeing going to have more coins being added, like 10, 10 plus new coins out of the, of the product. And they're looking at uh, U.S. expansion, which actually really excites me because that's where the company needs to go. That's yeah. the that's the that's where the volume force. is right you, you, were, you were speaking uh, i'm sorry to cut you off you were speaking about for liquid net <clears throat> for your network mm -hmm. it going up and down uh in in, in transaction numbers you were mentioning because right. that's you know where your revenue is mm -hmm. uh and i think for big getting into the american market is is probably the biggest mm -hmm. catalyst before uh uplistings about you know they need to, they need to get where the volume is 100%. Yeah. So that's, that's definitely it. I think, you know, love, love, love to see him get in California and, you know, New York's a tough nut to crack because of the, some of the licensing there, but ultimately it'll all happen. The brand is good. I'm really pleased with the team and their marketing. It's exciting to see. Um, incidentally, I have my, I have my net coins card here. Got my uh, visa just came in the mail. So nice. excited to be using that. Uh, You're building your uh, Bitcoin stash. I have, uh, I got some stash there. Yes. I got a few, <laughs> things, like a few things squirreled away in different places. Um, but uh, yeah, for sure. So that, that that's so exciting. So a lot of, and of course the the blockchain intelligence group, which is you know, uh, Clue and Bear Rank, and you know, I'm just absolutely amazed to see where it's gone. Uh, all the time we spent in Washington D.C. And, and all the different uh, law enforcement agencies, and coming full circle. Um, and the reason I have to there, say, yeah, I have to say, I'm, I, I'm shocked how much uh, value <laughs> is unrealized there, uh, yeah. especially when you look at the yeah. stock price, because you know. We're not throwing out numbers that are outrageous. You know, you got other companies uh, with the same software-ish, like industry selling for 500 million, 600 million, 700 million. Uh, and yeah. I, I don't feel like we're getting any value of that at all towards uh, our stock price. Could, couldn't agree more. And yeah. to do what it does at scale, uh, it's, it's tough. Did, did you want to say something? No, I was just, I, I was just going to reiterate. You know what Elon was saying. It's just it, it's like a sleeping giant. I don't think people realize the value of it. And when you look at chain analysis and you look at, uh, you know, some of the other, I guess, recent acquisitions. You know, not all of them publicly disclosed, but you know, you mm -hmm. have an idea of you know the value that they're putting on it. And uh, yeah, I I don't I just don't think people understand, uh, you know, what what it, it's it's tough. It is. I, I feel it because you know you see Cypher Trace getting bought by Mastercard, and there's a talk. You know, I was down meeting Bizel and. February and then we talked about some of the stuff they're doing with the analytics there and then the investments they're making and they're all just scrambling around trying to find solutions and meanwhile we're sitting on this asset here which which is uh it has massive scale and a huge amount of data and, and the fact it can handle that data and has so much information is incredibly valuable and um and I think that value will get unlocked as more and more companies get into the space I think it's gonna be clamoring for kind of you know they're gonna try to buy up best of breed and and the ability to scale. So, you know, in terms of unlocking that value, I would say, you know, you got to get to the valley. You got to get in front of other tech companies and, and that's where that needs to go. Um, but, you know, Clue is, it's amazing, an amazing product and seeing it go through its iteration, seeing it go from a, uh, an idea from this very desk and BitRank, and in fact, BitRank verified 
Uh, I did the original 10 rule set here in 2015 at 10 o'clock at night with a glass of wine. It was a page and a half Google doc, which was triple spaced. And I was like, I think that now it's like a 6,500 page science doc <laughs> with a whole team of engineers. And they, they've really just, you know, way beyond anything I could have ever done, but it's uh, amazing to see it get to that point. So most important, do you remember the wine you were drinking? <laughs> that was, uh, since, uh, since all my money was going to BIG, it was probably terrible wine. Uh, <laughs> we're right there with you. There you go. There you go. But, uh, no, excited to see that. Yeah. I think the value there is it's the one thing, which is it's a, it's a, it's almost a jewel on the crown and it's, it's, it's very unlocked. I think if we can get it down to the Valley and then uh, I'm happy to talk to Mark and the team, but they've got a lot on their plate and they're doing very well. And, um, but I think over time you're get it down there and keep getting in front of other big analytics companies that are down there that, you know, they're good at some point in my mind, they're just going to be forced to buy these kind of companies up and, or, or make investments into it. And the, the value will get on, un, get unlocked. So. Yeah. I just, uh, like I said, for me, it's, it's just mind boggling. Listen, I love all the facets of big. I love all the revenue streams, all the partnerships, all the companies, but you know, when people talk to me about clue, I'm like, you really don't have a clue about clue, you know, like <laughs> you, in all, in all honesty, the yeah. share price, if it had any type of relevance to to a clue in you know what it's capable of, we're not we're not trading below a, you know a dollar. Oh you know, no, I think that adds a dollar a share, in my opinion. Of course, I'm yeah. heavily biased. I'm talking my own book, uh, but it's just, certainly it, it's uh, yeah, you would be like, no, that's that, so that's worth a dollar a share right there. Just um, it, it's not even just to be able to duplicate what's there is you know, it's the amount of work that goes into it is. And money and money. Yeah, Mark, talking, yeah, Mark, Mark talks about the cost of entry, right? Uh, the barrier of entry. of entry, rather. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Finding the team, finding the engineers. I mean, the, the other company I've used invested in just raised another 65 million on a two, 300 million value. I mean, there it's, yeah, the numbers are way out there. And we're talking US numbers, of course. So we got to tack on for me, tack on 30%. So yeah. the numbers are even bigger, right? So, um, yeah, love to see that. Love to see that happen. And uh, a lot of other good things going on in BIG. They got the, the Terra Zero, and that's exciting. And, yeah, what are, what are your thoughts on Terra Zero? Uh, obviously, you know of uh, the massive investment, uh, mm -hmm. and and uh, obviously you know that I think this is just an add-on to what you said earlier about you know the internet of uh, the continuation of things that you can do. Uh, yeah. And um, what what are your thoughts on on the on first of all, if if I may ask you, uh, what are your thoughts about Terra Zero um, specifically in the space as they mm -hmm. are first to entry, you could say. Mm -hmm. um, and what are your thoughts of the landscape in general? Yeah, so I, 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 I know Dan from, from history. He was former head of DMGI. And um, they, we, you know, we have some <clears throat> stuff there. Certainly, I've talked to them recently about where they're going uh, in terms of payments and integrating Lightning Network as a possibility. And just in terms of, you know, forward thank you for Metaverse. Uh, it's a little early for that yet, but we want to get, get our minds wrapped around it. But Metaverse is very interesting. It's it's neat to see, you know, Facebook sort of going all in. But if you, and I'm a gamer, and that's kind of, you know, I've always been a gamer. If you're in computers, it's, if you're in computers, you work all day on a computer, and then you spend all night working on the computer playing games, <laughs> which is usually how it goes. But your 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 friends, your family's there, your friends are there, the ecosystems are. And, and I remember a lot of games you play, but like, you know, you're talking to your, your, your clan, like, oh, let's go meet on this hilltop over somewhere X. And you spend a lot of time in there. I mean, it, it seemed like it was just like a whole, you were perfectly happy to do it. So whether there was World of Warcraft or Battlefield or whatever it is, uh, you know, when you, if you've ever experienced that, you realize, hey, you know what, um, Metaverse, it, it can become a thing and maybe we won't live in there all day long, but it'll have its place. It'll get bigger and bigger. And it's kind of like introducing that gaming model of clans and family and what have you in, in inside of a game where you really are committed to doing something inside of this uh, unique, unique environment. So um it, it, it's from that perspective, it's not unusual. Uh, how it will continue to roll out? Well, um, you know, there's more and more rendering going on. There's more and more tech going on. And it'll take a it'll take a few years, but I think the value, unlike so internet days where it took a longer, to, a little bit longer to unlock because we didn't have all the roads of communication. Now everything's compressed. Time is compressed. Uh, you know, back in, in the mid '90s, you yeah, we set up Yahoo Japan. Well, they they flew engineers over there with with hard drives in their suitcases to go take the data. And set it all up again. Now that doesn't happen, right? It handles in, in minutes. So the, um, even look at other games like Second Life and how big it got and, and where it is. So it, it's it's a natural for the the generation coming up. And um, 
excited to see it. And of course, a lot of brands are going to move in there and people are going to be a, a continued land rush. We've seen sort of the initial push out, but uh, uh, there'll be a lot more happening. Yeah, well, I can't I can't get my kid off Roblox, so uh, <laughs> I expect I expect that generation to be very uh, uh, in the forefront of the metaverse for sure. So yeah, 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 it's going to be big. So yeah, tell we, us, yeah, go ahead, Div. Yeah, I was going to say we had the opportunity to, to catch up with uh, you know with with the Terrazero team with with Dan and Ryan a couple of weeks ago, and yeah, some of the things they're they're working on is you know really exciting. I think uh, Amadeo. Uh, you know, sounds super cool, right? Uh, I, th- I think there's a lot of value you could bring in. And obviously, you know, um, going public eventually, I think we'll have, uh, you know, a nice knock-on effect for big as well. I believe so too, yeah. I think it'll be it'll be huge. Yep. And uh, I guess lastly, give us, uh, what, what are your thoughts on, and big catalysts happening with Liquid in the next, you know, 12 months to 18 months? Yeah, yeah what, 12 months, you- so... Where we're going and uh, how we're going to get there. I mean, certainly, you know, we, you know the first big catalyst is the lightning network. It's just getting, it's gone from like being this thing in the tech world is getting much more publicity. And you're going to see some big companies really move into the space. Um, you're going to see a lot more exchanges continue to take it on because you've got cracking going on the first. Others will announce it. The network is actually becoming much more mature. And what I mean by that is one of the, one of the issues of lightning network, what it's had is liquidity and what they call channel rebalancing. So the payments would work uh, consistently well and not fail. Sometimes the payment in the past would fail. That is being put to rest. And as that continues to mature, then you're going to see the that the network effect really start to really continue to take hold. For us now, we're definitely looking at you know uh, acquisitions in terms of where we're going to go. But we also look at adding more Bitcoin to our balance sheet and continuing to to, to put it to work um, and earn more fees. We have that ability to do that because uh, as you talk to you know, the exchanges or regulators. They want to know why you're buying so much Bitcoin. And so certainly from a net, net coins and a BIG perspective, one, they want on the float and you, and you use it for, for, for the exchange and the one on the balance sheet. And we're, we're no different. We want it on our balance sheet, but we actually require, it is a technical requirement of the network. So the more Bitcoin we have on the network, uh, the more liquidity we can provide, the more transaction, more fees we can earn. So we want to have, you know, yeah, eventually 500, 1,000, but we want to get right out there. Now we're also working on some ideas uh, and we actually have some stuff built in our platform for down the line as we as we meet the regulatory uh, obligations of how do we uh, effectively take deposits from other big institutions uh, in Bitcoin and use that Bitcoin and share in the yield. So a yield sharing product, yield sharing platform that allow us the miners or, or other uh, corporations to simply have Bitcoin on the balance sheet right now, they're not earning anything. Um, they don't want to lend it out to, to these, these um, companies that maybe lend it out to individuals. They don't want counterparty risk, but they're willing to put it on uh, something like what we have and earn a money market yield. So you're not earning high yield, but you're earning money market style yield like you do now when you park your money at a, at a, at a GIC. And, um, and and that's where we see a, a big part of it coming to bring more liquidity in there and, and getting more, more more stuff that's on the network. So <clears throat> we'll continue to, we're a payments company ultimately, and we'll, we'll look to expand in the payment space and, and potentially with a retail facing product and um, you know, a wallet of some sort uh, at some point, we could see what we would probably like to do that by acquisition, not uh, not building it out. Very cool. Thank you. Very cool. So, Sean, thank you so much for your time today. Um, do you likewise? Uh, uh, do you uh, have any questions for us or anything? Uh, not like we're we're worth anything, but uh, <laughs> no. but in terms, uh, no. of, in, in terms Thanks, of our man. group. Yeah. No, I mean, I mean, in terms of value, to value add. But um, do you have any questions for us or um, anything like that? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, certainly, I know you, you know appreciate what you guys are doing for the space, and you're in uh, and uh, you know being a big shoulders of a BIG and uh, and the ecosystem itself, and and uh, you know you're you obviously have some understanding, conviction for the space itself, and and um, and your value investors in that sense. So. Um, just thank you. Thank you for that. In terms of where do you, you know, um, in terms of the market, where do you see some of the market stuff going in terms of you know, over the next, say, not four months? I'm, I'm really much short. I think we're going to go for four months here and Bitcoin's going to bottom and, and break out. But I'm an, I'm an eternal optimist. So. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, uh, for me personally, I, I've always been an optimist that, you know, I've always been kind of on the mark 100,000 by end of year. Uh, obviously, that's becoming a little tougher uh, as we go on. I think we're definitely in, in, in a downturn market-wise uh, in general. Uh, I think um, 
a lot of liquidity is being pulled out of Bitcoin right now. A lot of liquidity is being pulled out of the market right now. And I think uh, uh, there's obviously a lot of overreaction. There's a lot of fear mongering. Um, if in my mind, I always go by history. Uh, and the history is, is that the stock market always ends up higher than it was before. Uh, that's his, that's history. So um, for me personally, I invest what I can afford to lose and uh, I hold and uh, that, you know, for me personally, I'm not too concerned about it. I'll add when I can, uh, because, you know, especially for big, uh, I just, a lot of the numbers we're seeing uh, combined with no debt combined with, you know, all the partnerships we're doing were, you know, massive in the metaverse, lightning network, uh, and, and so forth. I feel, as you mentioned earlier, when we do see that boom, uh, I, I feel like w- w- this, this company is positioned the best to do that. So in terms of overall market, I do see us continuing to go down personally. Uh, I'm not an expert or anything like that, but you know, when, when there's fear mongering, uh, war happening, uh, currencies are going useless in terms of, uh, you know, what they're worth right. and, um, combined with all that, you know, uh, yeah, I've, that's where I see. I've, yeah, I, I'm going to borrow some, some words from our friends, uh, my friend Jay Paul and say, uh, I think this is all transitory. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, I, I mean, I, I think there's definitely, you know, a lot of fear in the market right now. I think, you know, there's, there's still probably some more time of pain, you know, maybe, a, maybe a couple more months, but um, I do think we'll see a run. We'll see another run this year. Um, hopefully a, a, a pretty good one. I think things are getting to the point where hopefully people will see value, right? You know, uh, we constantly know. chat, we constantly chat, you know, on our discord and we say, okay, like, you know, uh, you know, pick up some more, <laughs> pick up some more big, right. It's looking really juicy at this point. Right. Um, and I think that's going to hold true for, uh, you know, a lot of the stocks in this ecosystem. Um, but I think we're going to start seeing a lot of, you know, value in, in other stocks as well. And hopefully that'll lead uh-huh. to, um, you know, some more positive momentum uh, coming out of the summer. I couldn't agree more. Yeah, it's definitely, and it, it, a lot of stocks are starting to look like value plays now. I'm like, you know, whether it be Coinbase or, or BIGG and, and certainly are, you know, I've been active in the market last week on our own stock. And, you know, it, it's a, we can't fight the ocean, but we can certainly pick our battles and, 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 and wait for the, wait for the turn here. And, um, we have deep conviction of where we're going, you know, I mean, in this space for, for this long. <laughs> and well, such good, and well, it's going to happen, since, right? So, well, since you mentioned it, I mean, what are your thoughts on uh, the recent price action with, with Coinbase and their, I guess, recent results? Yeah, I mean, the results are, I haven't looked into all the results. I know they had some, you know, some slowdown. Uh, I haven't looked at terms of how they, they've carried some stuff forward. Uh, but, you know, looking at what is a $55 a share, anything long-term where they're going in the ecosystem, I mean, you know that um, these are the kind of companies that are either going to go on a buying spree or that the, the institutions are going to have to have to go and buy them. Actually, this gets down to, um, I'll just sort of close with this. I had, I was on a panel in New York, 2018, seven, I can't remember exactly when. Uh, and it was with a bunch of bankers, 42nd floor. There's like 30 bankers that had their, their big, uh, banking project for the blockchain. They're in there on, on the same panel. We're talking about where it's all going. And I said, well, what do you think, what do you think your risk is? And they're, um, in terms of where this is all happening. And they're like, well, our risk is, you know, we're, is anti-money laundering, compliance, all this kind of stuff. I'm like, well, companies like BIG and Chain Analysis, Elliptic, and, you know, you know Dave and those guys over at Chain at um, Cypher Trace, we've all solved this. This is the already solved. So your risk is that you don't understand what is coming. You don't understand that this is the next continuation of the internet and the next phase is here. And just like everything got decimated and all the commerce world by all these companies coming up and, um, your real risk is in action because how long do you think it's going to be until Google and Facebook and Silicon Valley all wake up and the lords and masters of the internet realize that they now have the perfect layer of technology, Bitcoin, to get into banking, to get into payments, and they have a direct access to people's phones. And, and right now, as banks, you guys are market leaders. You're in the pole position. You have you know, big war chests. You understand banking. You have the staffing. You have customers. But those sands are all eroding away. And you're going to, within five to 10 years, you're going to be competing directly with Silicon Valley and uh, as tech companies. And a bunch of you here are going to go under. And some of you are going to get taken out. Some of you are going to merge. And some of you are going to react early enough and, uh, and, and, and have to and stay in. This. But mark my word, it's coming. 
and uh, you can't fight this ocean. So this is your real risk. And if you guys could figure that out, you'll, you'll get ahead of the curve. If you can't, then you're going to go left behind like everybody else was in the, over the history of, uh, of change that the internet has brought. So, um, you know, this is, uh, this is coming. I think we're going to go, we're going to come through this volatility. Uh, Bitcoin's going to break out the other way. There's a lot of money sitting on the sidelines. Uh, it may bottom out at I don't, what price? I'm, I'm, I'm guessing 25, 28. I don't really know, but it'll do what it does. And then it'll start its relentless march forward. And when people wake up and realize that, hey, this is not just Bitcoin, but the Lightning Network and all these things are just 10x better than anything else. Um, it's just going to be a, an incredible seven year run as we march to 2030, right? Yeah, I think a lot of people uh, don't understand uh, how the fact that uh, this whole sector is still in its infancy, especially mm -hmm. considering the fact that it's tech. We all know, tech, uh, at least from my perspective, tech, it's still an infant, 10, 7, 10 years old. You know, mm -hmm. you guys are always changing things, figuring things out, adding things, buying things, uh, growing through merger and acquisition, this, that. So, you know, the true value, you're not going to see it in a while. But um, my last question to you, since you brought up an interesting point, uh, why would you, why do you think people are liquidating such big amounts to lower the price and to rebuy, or do you think it's it's a over leverage and and uh, and, and hedge funds doing what they do best? So market shorting. manipulation, yeah, market <laughs> manipulation for sure. You know, you know who knows, um, but no no question there they're they're gonna you know why did George Soros short the pound? Well, you know if they because they because he could. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, but ultimately, ultimately, you know, this, it gets down to, you know, some of this more clarity and, and, um, insight of what goes on in wall street. And one of the reasons we had, you know, the OA crash was we had such a, a chipping away of regulations. And, uh, when all said and done, nobody, there was no insight to who did what, where, and really nobody was held accountable for it. And, and then Bitcoin was born during that time. And it was, you know, just happy people were born during the time. And it ultimately represents this open trust layer that, Eventually, you know, there'll be data markers put in there for major transactions and corporations, and uh, you'll be able to follow the chain back. And, and this is the kind of stuff that will uh, strengthen the financial system itself. And, and uh, you know, this like, like uh, Elon, as you were mentioning in terms of like, you know, tech cycles and what have you, we are at a really special time in history. And the way I look at my, my tech background, all that kind of stuff, you really have a, a major protocol tech change once every 20 years. And I look back, say 1971, processors come up from Intel. Within 10 years, you have Apple and Microsoft being born and, and becoming you know, the juggernauts that they are today. 20 years after that uh, processors came out, the internet as we know it, 1988, 1990, right around there, it was kicked off. And within 10 years, you had you know, Google and on the juggernauts of now. And then almost 20 years from that point, you have Bitcoin coming out as this trust protocol and extension of all that. And the first 10 years is the establishment of the companies of the juggernauts up tomorrow. So we're going into that second 10 year phase where you're now you're seeing the real, the real growth and the, like, you know, your Coinbase went public and other companies are going to go public. And it's starting to happen in, in, in massive scale. So we're going into that very interesting time where you're, you're coming out of that, that infancy and it's going mainstream and you're, you're hitting the iPhone moment of 2006 where we're, we're coming into that and we're going to slingshot out and, um, it's, it's going to be, I, I'm ready. Fun. Yeah, me too. I, right. So <laughs> I, I, I'm ready. I'm ready. You know, if there was ever a time, uh, for people to get in, they got to get in now. And, uh, you know, yeah. at the end of the day, um, again, I think this is just the beginning of, of, of an entire industry, let alone, you know, uh, technology, uh, a new phase of our time. So Sean, I want to, uh, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, we will post your company's website, quick intro, and you. uh, your ticker in the subject of our YouTube video, uh, and we will uh, we will send you a, a copy of that. And um, you know, I, I want to finish it off with saying, uh, for me personally, uh, and, and I'll let uh, Div go. They say, "Show me who your friends are, and I'll show you who you are." Uh, in terms of the company, big in general. Uh, everybody's just been so fantastic, uh, getting back to us, willing to speak to us. Um, you know, uh, yourself, everybody else that we've interviewed till this point, uh, Lance coming up in a, in a few weeks, uh, but uh, it, within an organization to, to be able to reach out and actually hear from somebody and, and, and know that, you know, we're being heard and, and we're able to discuss conversations, conversations such as these. Uh, so I want to thank you for, for, for coming on. Thank you for being who you are. And you. Uh, we look forward to speaking to you again. Well, thank you very much for having me on. And if any, you know, 
uh, thanks for letting me ramble on <laughs> about different things, but uh, happy to answer any and all questions and, and I'm excited about uh, what we're doing and, uh, and, and the next step. So I, I really yeah. appreciate you taking the time to have me on. Uh, Sean, I mean, I, I think I think Elon summed it up uh, really well. So just thank you so much for your time. The only other thing I would add is, um, you know, please do send us a link to your book as well. We'll post that as well. And, you know, oh, thank I'll, you. I'll, 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 I'll personally get a copy, uh, you know, from this conversation, I, I've, I've learned a, a tremendous amount. So, you know, I I'd definitely love to, to give your book a, a read and uh, thank you so much for making time for us. Great. Thank you for sure. I appreciate it. And we'll, uh, we'll look to talk soon. Thanks, Sean. Take care. Okay. Thanks everyone. All right. Take care. Bye.